The lunar eclipse on September the 28th was surprisingly early in 2015, at least for me. I quickly connected the camera module of my Raspberry Pi to a 100-300mm zoom lens to capture that rare astronomical event. For the linkage, the rear plastic cover of a lens has to be surface grinded and drilled with a 8mm center hole. The lens of the camera module has to be removed. Put the camera board on a flat surface, I am using a piece of Depron as bedding layer and keep it in place with a caliper. With a stick of cold, hot glue you can press on the lens and unscrew it. You can also use a pencil with a rubber at the rear end. Now you can use some hot glue at the corners of the board to mount the camera module on the plastic cover. The flange focal distance, thus the length between the rear of the lens to the plane of the light sensitive chip has to be considered to record focused images. I tried several spaces and found that with 20mm best. It's no perfect solution, but on the afternoon before the event it was the best camera adapter I could create. My reasonably priced tripod is also no good solution for astronomical observations. As you can see, you get enormous clearance for your money. The Raspberry camera can't control the aperture of the lens. To get an aperture of less than 4, which is the maximum, the lens can be removed from the camera body while the aperture is triggered through a special button. The area of the light sensor used with the Raspberry Pi camera module is clearly smaller than that of a standard camera the lens was manufactured for. We get a crop factor of approximately 9, by what the focal length of this zoom lens gets up to 2700mm. We get a total view of the moon when adjusting the zoom to approximately 130mm, which equals 1200mm with the Raspberry camera module. Make that home built telescope point exactly to the moon is very tricky with that cheap construction. Considering the rule of thumb construction principles, the result is surprisingly good, however in absolute terms it is not outstanding. The celestial body moves with high speed from left to right, with a cheap tripod you can't follow that movement. The lunar eclipse started at 7 minutes past 3 in the morning. The Earth's shadow moves from top left over the surface of the moon. The moon is not moving in a circular path around the Earth. The largest distance between both celestial bodies is approximately 406,700 km. The lowest distance is around 356,400 km. At the time this lunar eclipse was recorded, the distance was just 356,880 km, which is very close to the smallest separation possible. Within a year, the average space between Earth and Moon rises for approximately 3.8 cm. The Moon is nippled by the Earth's umbra. The second sequence was recorded at 15 minutes past 3. The contrast of the video images is too low to see the reddish part of the moon surface that is shadowed by the Earth. I have recorded the sequences with an aperture of 11. The exposure time was set to 25 milliseconds with the software parameter shutter speed. The light sensitivity was set to ISO 100 to reduce image noise. The third sequence was recorded at 22 minutes to 4 in the morning. After approximately 30 minutes, more than half of the moon is covered by the Earth's umbra. 
This and the following three sequences are weekly, because I opened a window to be able to follow the movement of the moon on its trajectory. Warm air escapes through the opened window, causing those optical distortions. The moon orbits the Earth in approximately 27 days, which is almost a month. The average orbital speed is 1023 km per second. The Earth's mass is more than 80 times larger than that of the moon. In the fourth sequence, recorded at 18 minutes to 4, the shape of the illuminated moon surface is reduced to a narrow crescent. I failed to record the moon surface that is in the Earth's umbra by selecting appropriate values for light sensitivity, aperture and exposure time. I think I have to upgrade my equipment for the next lunar eclipse. At 6 minutes past 4, just a small fraction of the moon surface is still outside the Earth's umbra. At 24 minutes past 5, the moon starts leaving the umbra. The celestial object is above the roofs of my small hometown from my point of view. The temperature of the atmosphere dropped during the night hours of the total eclipse and the hot air from the buildings causes convection. Furthermore, the moon gets closer to the Earth's horizon by what the moonlight takes a longer way through the atmosphere. The scintillation of the moon is clearly visible. The more the moon exits the umbra of the Earth, the more you notice the scintillation. This sequence was recorded at 20 minutes to 6. My observation point is at 50.4440228 degrees north and 8.137021 east, near the center of Germany. Times are given as Central European Summer Time, which is plus 2 hours from the Universal Time Code. At 10 minutes past 6, more than half of the moon surface is visible again. By chance, a passenger jet crossed the line of sight between me and moon. Frankfurt Airport is just 80 km away. The jet is not climbing, but moving horizontally. The pilot demonstrates that I have turned my little telescope on the tripod in such a way that the moon moves horizontally through the screen, in order to capture preferably long video sequences once I have found the target. As mentioned before, it is hard to adjust the tripod and impossible to track the moon with that shaky construction. In truth, the moon is also moving in a vertical direction, approaching the Earth's horizon. According to this, I, with my feet on ground, can see the Earth's shadow on the bottom right of the moon. At 20 minutes past 6, the last but one sequence was recorded. My first attempt ever to record the moon ends soon. For sure I will try to improve my equipment over time and start future recordings of that fascinating object, preferably with better results. The next total lunar eclipse that is visible from my hometown occurs in the night from the 27th to 28th of July in 2018. That should be an adequate setup time. The last sequence was recorded at 26 minutes past 6. 
The moon leaves the umbra but the eclipse ended at 27 minutes past 6. You can get the build instruction of my telescope on the project page. Thanks for watching and I'll be back!